until you've aged it a little. How do I do that? Well, I broke the stuff. Here, I'll show you. What's that? To give it an antique look. It's done back. <laughs> By the way, if you got any hostilities, this is a marvelous way to work them off. Yeah, I can see that. I haven't had this much fun in years. <laughs> Here, you try it. Well, um, yeah, maybe later. No, no, go ahead. Well, I, I feel a little silly. <laughs> All right. but I don't want you to answer with a yes or no. Why? Because a lot of yeses and nos would seem suspicious if there's someone there with you. There's someone there with you, isn't there? Ah, uh, yes. I told you not to say yes. Well, how else am I supposed to... I've got a code all worked out. Now, listen, if the answer is yes, say a word beginning with the letter A. If the answer is no, say a word beginning with the letter B. All right? Is my mother there? Uh, apples. I thought so. Does she know I'm home upstairs here? You're... Bagel. <laughs> Could you make some excuse and then come upstairs here real quick, huh? Uh, well, I, I, I really, I, I don't, uh, uh, abracadabra. Good. I'll see you in a minute then. Okay, Rhoda. <laughs> did, you, did my mother just look up when you said, okay, Rhoda? Huh? Alabama. <laughs> Barging into 
into a person's room without knocking on the beads. <laughs> Rhoda, why don't you want to see your mother? Because I looked out my window and saw her carrying that down the street. She asked me to give it to you. I don't want it, Mary. Your mother comes all the way from New York to bring you a present, and you don't want it. Right. Mary, I sent her $50 a month in New York. You know what she does with it? Buys me gifts. And then she brings them to me. I gotta make her stop doing that kind of stuff, Mayor. Uh, Rhoda, she probably brings you the presents because she loves you. I love her, too. But she makes me crazy. How? <laughs> Read the card on that gift. I guarantee you it will be something that makes me crazy. <laughs> no one in the world will ever love you as much as I do. <laughs> That's lovely. To the naked eye, it's lovely. But think about it, Mary. I'm 30 years old, right? And single. No matter where I go, or who I meet, or how long I may live, no one will ever love me as much as she does. That's not a card. That's a curse. <laughs> Father, uh, does he make you crazy too? No. I was five years old before I knew my father could talk. <laughs> you know the first thing he said? Listen to your mother. <laughs> now do you understand, Mary? No, Rhoda. I'm sorry, I don't. I mean, your mother is down there and you're up here and you say you love her, but Mary, the chief, you're I... talking about Midwestern love. I'm talking about Bronx love. There's a certain amount of guilt that goes with that. <laughs> My mother wants the people she loves to feel guilty. Like with her pills. Her pills? Right, pills. My mother hasn't been taking her pills for as long as I can remember. Uh, what hasn't she been taking them for? I've never been sure. For all I know, they're an aphrodisiac. <laughs> no more, Mary, really. If, if she needs those pills, she'll take them herself. You're really not going to see your mother? No. Okay, Rhoda. Mary. Ask her if she's been taking her pills. Huh? <laughs> you'd let me fix you something to have for dinner. Oh, no, I never eat. I just nibble. <laughs> well, if you're still hungry, there's half a chicken in the refrigerator. Not anymore. That's what I nibble. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Stern, you take the bed. I just changed the sheets this morning. Oh, where are you going to sleep? Right here. Just push the two chairs together. Makes a pretty good bed. Oh, no, no, no. I can't let you do that. Yes, no. I'll be perfectly comfortable. No, really. I'm putting you out. I'm going to spend the night in a motel. Do you think they'll let me in without a car? <laughs> Mrs. Morgenstern, you're not putting me out. I found a motel down by the bus station for only five dollars a night. But uh, Mrs. Morgenstern, oh, I only hope it's clean. But Mrs. <laughs> if it'll make me stay, you can sleep on the chair. All right, I'll stay. Good. What, what are you doing? Well, that's what it cost me in that flea bag, so I'm certainly going to pay you. Oh, no, Mrs. Morgenstern, I could take your money. Oh, come on. Don't be silly. No, take what? For sleeping on my chairs? I want you to have the money. No, Mrs. Mrs. Morgenstern, I couldn't take it. Well, okay, have it your way. This is going to kill my back. <laughs> Thank 
Thanks, I'd love some. <laughs> Where's Ida? 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 Mrs. Morgenstern. Oh! How can you live with a woman for three days and not know her first name? Well, I just, I, I never thought of her as having a first name. Oh, Mary. That's so you. <laughs> <laughs> Going around calling a woman, but she doesn't want to be called Mrs. Morgenstern. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just, I can't call her what she wants me to call her. Mm -hmm. Ida? Mama. <laughs> Hello? Yes? It, who is this? Yes, Mrs. Morgenstern is still living here. It, no, I, I don't know when she... Rhoda, is this you? <laughs> yes, it is to you, Rhoda, so you can stop using the Italian accent. <laughs> Rhoda, look, if you're so concerned about your mother, why don't you come down and see her for yourself? I don't know if she's taking her pills. I'm sure if she's supposed to, she's taking them. Goodbye, Rhoda. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Morgenstern, where have you been? Out shopping. Hello, Phyllis. Hi, Ida. You were out in the snow wearing just that? Well, I thought if I went rummaging in the closet looking for my coat, I might disturb some of your lovely things. <laughs> Let me get out of your way. <laughs> I still can't understand what it is about Ida that upsets you so. You still can't, I... Well, okay, Phyllis, there, there are things like, uh, things like that. Like what? She's washing the dishes. What's wrong with that? I already washed the dishes. <laughs> Oh, Mary, it's just her way of showing how much she appreciates what you're doing. Like that gift she got you. Why don't you open it? I'm afraid to. Oh, oh, Mary. Okay, all right, fine, Phyllis, okay. I'm going to open the present. But you'll see, the minute I open this, I'm going to be in so much trouble. Now, don't you feel a little ridiculous? I, uh feel a lot ridiculous. <laughs> well, I'm glad I could help you, Mary. Bye, Ida. I'm just... Mrs. Morgenstern, I really like the scarves. Oh, you really like them? Oh, yes, I love them. Well, it's nice of you to say that anyway. No, no, I'm, I'm not just <laughs> saying that, Mrs. Morgenstern. I really love these scarves. Well... No, really, look, I'm, I'm going to wear one. Look, I'll wear it to work. Hey, the color is absolutely perfect, huh? How about this? I'm sorry you don't like the other one. Morgan <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stern, uh, did you take your pills today? <laughs> Mama. <laughs> Mary, can I ask you something? Mm, yes. Why are you wearing two scarves today? <laughs> it uh, seemed like a good idea at the time. Mary, did you get that list I asked for? Uh, what list? A film. Uh, what film? Well, the special we're doing tomorrow night. And don't say we're special. I won't. But you want to, right? <laughs> <laughs> did I just go... <laughs> yes, you did. That's what I thought. When I go... <laughs> It's a pretty good sign my blood pressure is getting up there. My doctor says I've got to learn to relax or give up drinking. So I'm going to learn to relax. <laughs> right now. Murray? What? What special are we doing? It's called, Is Air Pollution Really So Bad? <laughs> what kind of a television station does a special favoring air pollution? Well, one when the chairman of the board owns a smelting plant. <laughs> Could I have that new insignia? This one's... Oh, Ted, I'm sorry. I left it at home. Well, you better go home and get it. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll bring it in tomorrow, Ted. I, I'm just, I'm so busy today. Well, I can't go on tonight without that insignia. Well, all right, I've got somebody staying with me. I'll call and see if she can bring it over. <clears throat> the threads came loose. Terrific. <laughs> She said she was going to be in all day. What about my insignia? I mean, if she had changed her plan, she would have told me. I want my insignia. Maybe she's in the shower. This has to be taken care hey, of. Please, don't flap that at me. <laughs> well, I'm not going to argue about this. I'll just speak to Lou. Lou? 
Mary, don't worry what he says to Lou. He can't say anything intelligible unless I write it down for him. She still doesn't answer. Mary, did you get that stuff for me? Uh, what stuff? <laughs> Mary, come into my office. Mr. Grant, I know what you want to see me about. I, I know what Ted told you. I was supposed to bring in his WJM insignia today, and I forgot. I left it at home, so I called my friend's mother, who was staying with me, to see if she would bring it over, and she wasn't at home, which has me a little upset, because I, she would... You know what's got me really upset? I have no idea. I just sounded nuts. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Mary, life is tough. No, it's not really tough. What do you mean, not really? I give you a cliché, three dumb words, and you want to argue with me? I said life is tough. Well, yes, it is. It, it, it's a little tough. Uh, it's getting tougher all the time. I'm not interested in your friend's mother. That's tough. I'm not interested in whether Ted gets his insignia or not. That's tough, too. And by tomorrow night, I gotta come up with a bunch of reasons why pollution isn't so bad, or the chairman of the board's gonna get pretty upset at me. Like I said, life is tough. You're right, Mr. Grant. A life is, is tough. Uh, you wanna know what else is tough? If you don't start shaping up, I'm gonna have to fire you. Do you mean that? No. This is scare tactic. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I do mean. For the last few days, you've been doing a rotten job around here. Oh, Mr. Grant, I know. For the last couple of days, I've been just a little off. No, 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 no. Not a little off. Rotten. <laughs> There's two things I'm trying to get through to you. Life is tough. And you've been rotten. <laughs> it's just that the last couple of days, all I've been able to think about is Rhoda and her mother, and I, I've let you down, and... Well, Murray's been doing half of my work for me in there. I've... The last couple of days, I've been just... rotten. <laughs> well... Look, uh, you've been a little off, that's all. No, I've been rotten. What happened here? <laughs> You didn't miss any messages. Let's see. Uh, at 11 o'clock, somebody rang four times. At 11.02, somebody rang six times. And at 2.15, somebody rang 14 times. <laughs> Listen, Mary, I've been noticing something. You're getting nervous. I think you should kick me out. Oh, Mrs. Morgenstern, I, I couldn't... I wouldn't kick oh, you out. Oh, I know it'd be very hard for you because you're so fond of me. But you ought to kick me out. But I, 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 no, look. Now, you tell me that it's crowded here. Go ahead. Well, it, it, it's a, a little crowded. All right, you see, now you're doing fine. Now, I understand that. Now, do you want to make it easy for me to go back to New York and make yourself feel better even though you're kicking me out? Uh, <laughs> yes. Then promise me you'll write. I promise. How often? I'll write at least once a, a week. 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 <laughs> Mrs. Morgenstern, are you really going to go back to New York without seeing Rhoda? Well, it's all right. I got a letter from her. A letter? Yeah, she slipped it under the door. Here we are. Read it. Dear Ma, return the gift and make sure you get cash. Use it and the money in here to buy something for yourself, not me. I'm sorry I couldn't see you, but you know we'd end up yelling. Love. Guess who? <laughs> oh, that Rhoda, she's always clowning. Not every mother has a daughter like that. I 
wish I could see the daughter I got like that. <laughs> I've got to talk to you. Well, come on in. Uh, well, listen, uh, could we talk out there? I mean, I feel, I feel a little funny in here. I I'm sorry, Mary. No, I, I got to get this display done in a hurry. I think the bride's in trouble. <laughs> listen, um, Rhoda, aren't you going to ask me how your mother is? How is she? She's going home to New York tonight. That's how she is. What do you want out of me? Rhoda, would it hurt you so much to go down to the bus station and say goodbye to her? And hello? No, it wouldn't. Well, then. But if I go down to that bus station, Mary, I won't get off with just a goodbye. I see her, it sets me back 20 years, minimum. Well, then, uh, don't turn around. Hello, 1950. All right, I told her that you'd be working late tonight. Boy, my mother. You gotta hand it to her. She's got a back that could break your heart. Ah, oh, come on. I always cry at weddings. Return it. Uh, just try it on, will you? Try it on? Mama, you take the money I send you and you buy me a coat like this. This is ridiculous. This must have cost what? Hey, you still leave the price tag in your gift, don't you? Yeah, here. Uh, read it. <laughs> Rhoda, you're not supposed to ask how much a present Will you read it? $495. Ma! Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Morgenstern, what Rhoda's trying to say is that she doesn't want you spending the money she sends to you on presents for her. But I was saving the money for her. I don't need the money. Your father's doing very well. What are you talking about? A long time ago you wrote me that Dad had some big business reverses. Reverses? Yes, upwards. <laughs> Up until then he wasn't doing so hot. You've got money? And we're comfortable. If she says we're comfortable, I think I'm an heiress. <laughs> Try on the coat. Oh, Rhoda. Oh, Ma, this is gorgeous. Okay, you don't like it. Get oh. <laughs> 